Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 2 of our understanding the ABC of Dockers. So in this video we'll be talking about understanding and working with containers. So this video is going to be a complete continuation of part 1 since in part 1 we were discussing about the introduction to Docker. So please go ahead and watch the part 1 before watching this part which makes more sense for this part. So let's get started. So in our last video we're discussing the docker and we also said that everything in docker is container. So what is this container is all about? So we'll just discuss about container in a more detailed sense in this video. Alright, the containers are an isolated resource control and a portable operating environment. So basically a container is an isolated place where an application can run without affecting the rest of the system and without the system affecting the application. So it's completely isolated. Containers are the next evolution in virtualization. If you were inside a container it would look very much like you were inside a freshly installed physical computer or a virtual machine but actually it's just a container which actually ha shares the same kernel but they just have the different user space and that's why you feel like you are sitting inside a freshly installed physical computer. Where can I see these containers actually sitting? So we were talking about this container a lot right for from the past two videos and where is these containers? Well all these different containers are sitting in what is called as a HTTP colon double slash hub dot dockers dot com and if you go there you can search for all these uh, these containers. Let's quickly see how it looks. So for that I'm going to flip to Chrome. So here what I'm going to do I'm just going to go to the hub dot docker dot com and it will invite you to a login for within your docker so you can actually create a free docker account. So we're not going to really touch this part as of now. So I'll just quickly search for some of these uh, sees, uh, dockers containers. So you can click this explore and you can see there are so many official repositories available like Ubuntu, Redis, Swarm, Mongo, MySQL, Postgres, WordPress etc. And you can also search for some of the automated uh, build like if I search for Selenium uh, you can see you have the selenium docker.selenium and ubuntu selenium and selenium hub etc so if you go inside this you can actually see the information of this particular uh, this particular repository and it will also give some of the information like docker pull command uh, who is the owner and what is the source repository of this and what is the tag docker file build detail etc so we'll actually talk about these stuff later but as of now just understand that this is how this is how you can actually explore and search for some of the containers available uh, in docker so there are so many containers available in docker uh, whatever you want you can actually use it within your local machine is there any other way to browse these containers other than the hub.docker.com of course yes there is something called as kitematics so you can use this something like this so you can act actually see whatever you saw in there in the hub.docker.com in your uh, you know machine and you can actually do the uh, the GUI interface operations as opposed to the command line uh, operations so if you're going to do a operation called docker pull selenium slash hub in a command prompt you can actually do the same thing via a ui so you can actually go right here in the uh, in the kitematics actually this kitematic is available along with the docker if you have already installed the docker you can see there is a docker uh, running in here you can just just right click and there is something called as open kitematics so you will get this folder and within this uh, kitematic you can actually see the different kinds of uh, containers which is available online and you can actually install the same from this particular uh, UI itself so it's actually loading all the images and you have to first sign in into this kitematic for the first time I have actually signed in uh, as an execute automation and that's why it is automatically loading all these uh, images for me so as you can see there are uh, different kinds of uh, containers available like Jenkins, Ghost, uh, Postgres, Ubuntu so whatever you saw online in the hub.docker.com exactly the same is uh, coming right here and you can actually uh, click this create button uh, to, uh, to create a local copy of container within your machine so we'll actually talk about all these stuff in later video of this course right 
So what this container actually has inside? As said earlier, containers contain everything you require for your software to run, like an operating system, a software that you build, the dependencies to run your software, like pre site softwares, and environment variables, and whatever you name it. So everything sits within inside the container. So what if I change something in my software and the dependencies, what will happen to those containers then? Actually, within a container, there are a lot of things like versioning. So Docker includes a Git-like capabilities for tracking successive version of a container, inspecting the difference between the versions, committing new versions and rollbacking, etc. So you can do exactly like, like a versioning system like Team Foundation Server or a Git, where you can actually check in or update some of the container and then those updates will be sitting within inside that container so if you really don't want that particular change within your container you can also do a rollback of that particular change within your container so it's more like a uh, version controlled containers and you can always track what's happening within that particular container so you actually maintain the versioning of a container so the history also includes how a container was assembled and by whom so if within your company, uh, two or three people are actually using uh, the same container and if you are making the changes, then you can also include uh, the history of who is doing what. So you get the full traceability from the production server all the way back to the upstream of the developer. And the Docker also implements the incremental upload and downloads similar to a git pull. So new versions of containers can be transferred by only sending the difference which means if uh, you are building a container or if you're using a container and if you're downloading uh, a new version of container, so it won't download the whole container into a machine again. Rather, it will only download the difference between the changes within the same container, right? So it will tremendously increase the performance of downloading and also the usage very quickly than compared to your actual uh, kind of virtual machine or something like that. And also there is something called as component reuse. So any container can be used as a base image to create more specialized components. So this can be done manually or as a part of an automated build. For example, you can prepare the ideal Python environment and use it as a base for 10 different applications. So your ideal Postgres setup can be reused for all your future projects and so on. So it can, so the same container can be used as a base image as well. Right, so these are the super cool things available within the Docker's uh, Docker's container. So does this containers only has the Linux operating system in it? Well, you asked a good question. Starting Windows Server 2016, there will be Windows Server containers, which provides greater level of flexibility. Using this, we can integrate with existing Windows technologies like uh, like .NET, ASP.NET. PowerShell and more. So Windows Server 2016 is not released yet while recording this particular video, but soon you will have these kind of uh, container operations within Windows as well. And please note that this Windows Server's container will only support in the Windows Server 2016. So older version of operating system will not support as of now. Maybe there will be some backward compatibilities, who knows, but yes, Windows Server 2016 has the feature and not only Linux operating system, Windows operating system also can be containerized and there is something called as uh, Windows uh, Nano Server. So using the Windows Nano Server is a stripped down version of uh, a, a server operating system where you can use that as a, as a kernel without having any feature in it, but you can build any features on the top of those kernels and then you can perform the operations, right? So again, I really don't want to go uh, deep inside those concepts again but just be informed that the containers also support Windows. All right, so let's start working with the dockers and containers then and we'll have a clear understanding of how things works. So the next video will be actually installing the docker in our machine and uh, following that we'll be starting to work with those containers. Thank you.